Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soul. I am in the studio today after a long absence. So I had every intention of being here this month and doing some more videos, but life happens and I have been back and forth again. So I'm here now, hopefully for the entire month of April, I can get a lot of things finished. So if you have been following my channel, welcome back and thank you uh, for tuning in. If you want to stick around to the very end of this video, I'm going to pick up my Bodhi journal, I think, and see where I left off because I left in a hurry about 10 or so days ago. So um, here I am uh, with my Roxy's Journal of Stitchery 2022 project. Uh, because it's the end of the month, I wanted to get a video out sharing my March page. And I had a question from Rita um, yesterday, I think it was. Thank you, Rita, for your comments. I uh, wanted to answer those in this video too. Like me, Rita is brand new to stitching. This is a great project if you're just learning. Um, it is put on by uh, Roxy Creations, Rachel and Sarah Roxburgh, their sisters, and they both uh, put weekly videos out following along the same path, but they each have their own style and are approaching things in different ways so you get to actually learn uh, from two different people, similar uh, things. So I'll kind of go over a little bit about um, the project and Rita wanted to know how to actually get started. So I'll kind of cover that a little bit. If you want to do this project um, or even not this project, but just learn about slow stitching, this video series is still a really good one because they really start at the very beginning for beginners. And so this was the perfect project for me to start learning. So the project started in December and they covered basics, um, collecting your materials and supplies that you would need and that kind of thing. And then um, getting your base pages and teaching you stitches. That was all just during the month of December. And then starting in January, you're doing your actual monthly pages. There's only one page a month, so it's very doable. Um, even if you haven't started and you want to do this project, you can start anytime and just go at your own pace. And then there are also a Facebook page and an Instagram hashtag that are groups just for this project. So you get to see everybody else's work too and get lots of ideas. So even if you are starting now, that's kind of a bonus that you get to see all the things that people have done so far. I kind of follow it more on Facebook than I do on um, Instagram. And there are people to this day that are just starting. So I encourage you to start watching the series from the very beginning. And I will put a link down below uh, for the playlist and also for the Instagram and Facebook pages. So what we started with is, you know, find a book cover that you're going to use. And the reason you need to do that is that's going to tell you how big to make your bases for your pages. I haven't done anything else to my cover. Um, I notice on the... Uh, Facebook groups that some people are going on and doing um, I think I, th I think Sarah might be one of them is maybe doing a soft cover and one may be doing a hard cover and I can't remember because it's been a few months now um, I decided I'm going to do a hard cover I have no idea how it's going to go together they're not going to show that till the end and it's a six month project now, when I made my pages, I went ahead and did 12 because I thought, well, maybe they're going to do 12. Why would you only do half a year? But I'm sure there's a good reason. So I I had went ahead and made mine as if I'm going to do 12, but I can see already that only three months in, I am going to fill up this book. So I can see why it's only six months per volume. When I first started uh, doing mine, I think Sarah, one of the sisters, is going to do her pages um, like this. These these will get sewn into the book um, like a signature. And I started out, I made those because I thought that's how I wanted to do mine. Then I changed my mind and I think Rachel is the one that's going to do the accordion style. Basically it's one long strip of fabric and each page you kind of fold it accordion. Each page then has a panel stitch to it and then those will get stitched into the book again. I don't know how that they're, they're going to show us how at the end. That's, you know, kind of how the, the book base that you need. You don't even have to do this part of the pages yet. I guess if you don't want, you can just work on pages themselves that are going to get attached. And I think that was kind of part of Rita's question was, what do you start with for your base? So in one of the very first 
videos that they had, they go over all this and what types of fabric you can use. I ended up just having a bunch of this kind of a muslin, just a cotton fabric, and it's just really thin. And I, so I just cut them, my bases to fit in my book from this scraps of fabric that I had. Mine ended up for my book, I just measured, it's like five and a quarter maybe by eight and a quarter would be the size of a page. But then I think when I tore these, I might have done them a little bit smaller. It might be smaller one way. Um, and I've kind of trimmed some down because they're going to get attached to another piece that's your actual book page. So I wanted my ticking, which is going to be my actual book pages, to be that size, that five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. But I think it's going to work. So, you know, you, you just kind of want to have your pages fit within your book, however, whatever that measurement is. Okay. And then you're going to cut... Um, these and I if we do six months you'll need six for the months but then you also will need a title page uh, which they don't really go into too much a title page if you want to do that I'm still working on my title page um, but that will go there and then when they in December they go over the stitches just some basic stitches to teach you and they do five a week so you have plenty of time to work on it I didn't space mine kind of the way they did, and it took up more, and then I, I needed to fill in with some other stitches that they didn't teach, and then I put this heart in there just to kind of fill up my two pages. I think they did it where it was on one page, but I kind of like this layout because I have a title page, my two sampler pages, and then I start my months. Otherwise, I'd have a sampler here in my January, February, that kind of thing. So I kind of like how that worked out that way. So this was my January page, my February page, and now I want to share my March page. Rita had asked a question, um, in case you're not wanting to do this project, how you even get started. And the nice thing about Rachel and Sarah's videos is every week is a different step in the process and they're kind, they go the same every, every month. Um, but your, your theme may be different. So the first video of that month will be, you know, take your base fabric and then you're going to find your background fabrics. So there's a prompt for backgrounds and then for your kind of focal point. Okay. The first month it was vintage lace and bouncing bunny and your bunny didn't have to be bouncing, but you just needed a bunny on your page somewhere. So I used some vintage lace and my bunny. And then February was neutral backgrounds and fancy flowers. And so the background fabrics, you can see they were all neutrals and then a bunch of flowers. And so for March, it was vintage or reclaimed fabrics and bright butterfly. So I will share with you what I did for my March page. So this is my March uh, page. I haven't sewn it in yet. It's going to have this little bit of trim here. And then I'm not sure what else I'll add if I'll have, uh, however I attach it, should be um, a hidden stitch or kind of something more decorative. I don't, I'm not sure yet. So I haven't put it in. But I wanted to share it with you while I have it detached so that I could kind of maybe answer some of Rita's questions. So I started out with uh, my base fabric, just my, my muslin. And on a lot of these, um, I think I, I ended up trimming them down a little bit from when I first cut them because I want a little bit of my ticking to show around the edge. So I'll, this one will be my next month and I'll probably take just a little bit off of this. It ends up by the time you build up your page that you don't see that background anyway. It's kind of all hidden. So it really doesn't matter what fabric you choose. Um, I would suggest something um, not too thick because depending on what you add, you know, you may be going through a lot of layers. And then just something that's easy for your needle to go through because like I said, you're going to be stitching through more layers. And in this case, I even kind of intentionally did it, but it made trouble for myself because I have a really thick part right here. And I'll I'll see if I can explain that part to you in just a second. So I needed to use either vintage or recycled fabrics. 
Um, I don't have a lot of vintage fabrics, but I do have some recycled because I don't throw anything away. I also kind of like my pages because it's a journal um, to kind of reflect that month, what may be going on that month, or um, just the feel of nature in that month, the weather, that kind of thing. And it really worked out for me for my first two pages. Um, and for the third, the third month, I wasn't sure where to begin. I mean, I had bright butterflies that I needed to put in there, but I, I really kind of like to have uh, a story behind it or a theme, something like that to help me with design. So for this month, I started with looking for my background fabrics because that's kind of the first step. And I don't know about you, but I have a hard time moving forward the weeks um, the different steps until I kind of know what my little focal points are going to be because it may um, dictate how I arrange my fabrics on the background. So for this month, um, I decided March is my husband's birthday month. So that was kind of um, putting that in my mind. And then also with the obvious things going on in the world, I also wanted to kind of have a nod to what's going on in that regard also. So I went through and I, I used to make um, aprons out of my husband's old work shirts. And when I mean old work shirts, he would always wear like collared, button up, nice shirts, you know, not dressy with just with jeans, but he always wore, it, you know, a buttoned up shirt. And so I, after he retired, I took a lot of those shirts he was going to get rid of and I made aprons out of them. And when you do that, you end up with the some of the fabric left from sleeves and the back of the of the shirt. So I have lots of little bits and pieces. So I decided I would take um, this part up top is um, blue and yellow. I wanted that kind of color in my piece. And then that little part, I don't know if you can see it, that was part of the shirt on the sleeve, you know, where you, where you button the cuff. So I still had, I had cut the cut, cuff off, but I still had that part of the sleeve that had the little button. And I wanted to leave that so that it kind of was a nod to me that it was from his shirt. So I, I used that and then I found a couple other pieces of his shirt, old shirt. And then I just, I wanted to kind of break it up and give it that vintage feel. So I found this old piece of lace um, that's off of something. So that was kind of reclaimed too. And then in Sarah's video, she did a little quote about a, I think it was about a butterfly, I'm not sure, but she did a little quote that she liked or a poem or something. And I liked that idea. This is a little quote that I have used for years and years. Uh, it says, flutter by butterfly floating flower in the sky. And so I wanted to use that because that is just something that I've, I've had in my head for many, many years. So I went ahead and I just took another piece of scrap of fabric, just aged it up a little bit with some, I think I used some antique linen distress oxide. Um, and I just maybe put this a little bit of that on my glass mat and then spritzed it and then just got my uh, piece of fabric in there just to kind of give it that a little yellow kind of look to it. And then I just used little stamp little letter stamps kind of like she did um, and stamped the, the poem on there. And then I, it took me a while to even get my, um, my shirt fabrics arranged in a way that I wanted because I didn't have my butterflies done and I didn't know what color they were going to be. Uh, I knew I wanted them to stand out from the shirting fabric, but maybe kind of pick up some of the ones that were more colorful. So I, I wanted to share how I made my little butterflies. And I took some, again, a recycled fabric. This is uh, some uh, recycled kimono um, that was damaged. And I had already cut out all the little embroidery. There was probably a butterfly in there, but I had used them years ago making a lampshade. And so I just had these pieces of silk left. So I, I took a piece of silk and in the case of these two but larger butterflies, I took a piece large enough that I could fit it into this little hoop. This is just a little four inch hoop. For most of this, other than the butterflies, I don't use a hoop, but because it was on silk, which is really flimsy, I thought it would be for what I wanted to do much easier if I had it in a hoop. So I just, you know, used, used that and that, that did make it much easier. I'm not good at drawing really. Um, 
don't consider myself that kind of artist. I'm I'm practicing, but I'm still not there. And so I I, I didn't know what to do for my butterfly, and I remembered that I, I kind of went through my stamps that I had, and I found these butterfly stamps. I got these at Hobby Lobby, I think. And so, um, but I'll, I'll put the link down below in case you want to find them. But it was nice because they were all different sizes, so I could maybe choose three. Um, so I stamped my, I chose three butterflies, different sizes, and stamped them onto my silk. And I don't have a piece to show you, but it came out nice and nice and clear. That way I would kind of have a guide to do my stitching. In uh, Rachel's first video, she did a tease about how she was going to put wire in the wings of her butterflies. And I didn't know where she was taking it because she didn't share that in that first video. She just did like a little portion. And I didn't know how what she was going to end up doing with them. But it, it gave me the idea to use wire in my butterflies just so I can kind of make them look three-dimensional too. I really liked that idea. So I wanted to do something different than she was. So I thought, well, I'm going to find wired ribbon. So I have a bunch of ribbon. This was one. Um, I just went and pulled all the ones that I had that had wire. And I loved this one because that little detail on the edge was going to be really pretty around the edge of a wing. So what I did was I just cut the, the ribbon right along the edge so that I didn't undo the whole thing. You know, I kept where it was stitched on, but I just cut it so now I have the, the wire with already decorative fabric around it. So I just cut a strip long enough to go around my wings, and then I just kind of uh, chose a color. Let me see if I can, if you can see it. I just chose a color thread that really kind of uh, coordinated with it. I think I ended up using kind of like a hot pink color, raspberry color. And then I just stitched it around the edge of my butterfly. Now, I my butterfly wasn't cut out when I did that. I should say that. I have this fabric in the hoop with my stamped butterfly. And, and so while it was in here, I could just lay that wired ribbon, that little edge that I had cut, around the edge of my butterfly and just kind of um, do like couching and couched it on. So I did that. Now, I didn't mind, you can see the edge of my butterfly. I didn't mind if that uh, orange from my ribbon, the part that I cut, was kind of not attractive on my uh, silk because I was going to add embroidery and cover that up anyway. So my little uh, light blue French knots kind of covered part of the edge. And then I just did a little back stitch, I think, in a color. And then whipped it to give it that stripey look. And then there's kind of the lime green look. And I think that's about it. And then I used just this, the body of the butterfly is just kind of more of that, um, the wired ribbon just to kind of have that same edge color. I think this was kind of all one piece. I just kind of crisped and crossed around that way to get it on there. And then I have, um, I took just some of the little wire for the antenna that are there. And then, so you can see, you know, the back of it's kind of messy, but um, you don't really see it. And then I kind of wanted it to stand out a bit. So I took my, this is because my husband always wore those shirts with just old fashioned 501 Levi's. So I, uh, I, t I have his jeans too because I would cut those up and make my junkin sacks, big, big junkin sacks, I call them, uh, shopping bags that I would take to like vintage flea markets and that kind of th stuff for shopping bags. So I took um, the stamp again and I stamped the back side of a pair of jeans. That way I could cut out just the outline of the butterfly and then I just have that um, kind of stitched on to there. Oh, I should back up. Um, I did it kind of in the order that I did things, but I'm not answering Rita's question. So, sorry. Okay, so when you go to stitch on the background fabrics, okay, you have your background fabrics, and we're just going to pretend like, say this was one, and I'm going to have another one here and another one here, just kind of all over. You lay those background fabrics, they may overlap or whatever, you kind of arrange them how you want and then you're just going to tack them instead of pinning you know you're going to start out maybe by pinning them 
where you want them. Okay, and they're all over. And then you want to kind of tack them down so that you're not running into these pins all the time and snagging things on, okay? So for that part, once I got my shirting fabrics and this, you know, figured out where they were gonna go, I'd pin them on and then I just take um, something heavier than like this is regular, um, just regular all-purpose thread. This one is upholstery thread. You can also get like craft thread or button thread. It's thicker than regular um, thread and it's cheap instead of using like your embroidery thread or whatever. And then I'll see this because it's thicker. Okay, so you have your, your pieces all laid out and pinned and then you're just gonna take the uh, upholstery thread or button thread, whatever you have that's thicker than all purpose thread. And you're just gonna start in a corner somewhere and make a little stitch. This is just so it doesn't pull out as you go around. I need it obviously a much longer thread. I'm just gonna do a little part of this. So then you're just gonna base this on. Doesn't have to be pretty, nothing. You just, this is just so you can take out your pins. Okay, so you would make sure that you catch the edges of all your pieces so that they're just attached to that back, that base, that background fabric. This is the base fabric, and these are your background fabrics, so I'm saying it backwards. Okay, so you're just going to attach those. Then, once you're ready to actually sew those on permanently, when you've done that, you can take this out. You can just remove it. So, to do your stitching, to attach your background fabrics to your base fabric. I think in the first video, Sarah did a cantha stitch and Rachel did the hidden stitch. So in this page, I chose to do the cantha stitch, um, partly because my fabric had stripes and I just kind of wanted to see those just for like an extra background texture. So cantha stitch is basically a running stitch just up and down, up and down. I, I didn't even try to be pretty about it, or even if it goes wonky, that's okay. Um, that's from the back side. But you can see, you, you do them pretty close together, just so everything's really attached well. And some of them, if they were stripes this way, I uh, made my uh, stitching go that way. I changed the color. So for this one, I used a light blue uh, thread, an embroidery thread, just one strand, and I went um, back and forth. You can use, if you want it to show up more, you can use more strands, but I just chose one. And then one of these other fabrics, well, when I did over the, the lace, had fabric as a part. It was like this crocheted lace on two sides of a strip of fabric. So I used just kind of an ecru color there. And then um, on these two, they were more of a plaid. So I chose a a tan kind of that ecru kind of tan color and went up and down this way just to be different and then on this one it had kind of this burnt orange reddish color so I found that kind of color and I went the other direction so it just kind of gave some interest by switching my direction of my cantha stitch when I did the other um, on this one on this one I did a mixture of cantha and hidden stitch and on this one, I just did the hidden stitch. The hidden stitch um, ends up just kind of, you don't see it really, but it gives these little puckers like it's quilted. So there's a tiny, you see it kind of like a tiny little tack stitch in there. It's, you do that by making a long stitch in the back and then you kind of just get the tiniest bit that you see on the front. And then you go a long stitch in the back and then just a tiny stitch in the front. Again, you know, I'm not showing all of these stitches. If you watch the, the videos from the beginning, they will show you, they do it in detail. And so um, you'll see exactly how to do these um, stitches. So Cantha to attach my base, my background fabrics to my base fabric. And then you do the decorative stuff. So her uh, Rita's question was, you know, what order you do do things? Uh, when when they when Rachel and Sarah do their videos, they kind of follow the same order regardless of the page. So you start out with your background fabrics. That's maybe the first week, um, getting those attached, 
And then the second week is, is maybe the composition. So anything else that you're gonna add, like the little this, knowing where my butterflies are gonna go, kind of deciding uh, what else I'm gonna put on my page. I mean, it could have been anything, but because it was butterflies, I just wanted to put flowers. So for me, uh, I had to do these butterflies um, to kind of know what colors, what other uh, fabrics that I wanted to maybe make some flowers out of. I had never um, made or worked with yo-yos or Suffolk puffs, they call them. And so I wanted to maybe try that for my flowers since I've done already some lots of flowers on this one. So I thought it would be fun to do something that was more appliqued and embellished. Uh, so it was a first. I found a video online to teach you how to make a yo-yo or a Suffolk puff. And so I actually used some of the shirting fabric. This was a vintage fabric. It was a sample that I got from my mother-in-law's estate. Um, so that was kind of nice to incorporate something from her. And actually there's a little button from her too. And then these two were um, re just leftover bits from a, another lampshade that I had made a long time ago. So I kind of just used all recycled stuff. I knew I wanted my butterflies. I did this one first. Um, put the denim behind it and then uh, I didn't attach these right away because they kind of were in the way I kind of wish I would have waited even longer but I really wanted to kind of see color wise where they were going to lay out um, this one I used a different um, same silk that I used but the wired ribbon that I used for that one was this one so it just kind of has this gold two-tony kind of color um, just to be different for that one and a nice straight edge. So that was that little butterfly. Um, and then just tried to use some different colors that I pulled out of the shirting fabrics to kind of make it all coordinate. Um, and then I didn't put the denim behind that one. So I had done those two butterflies and the Suffolk puffs uh, to kind of lay out how my colors were gonna balance out. And then I attached, well, I went ahead and attached this because I knew that's where that was gonna go. And I attached it with just a little uh, running stitch or back stitch that I whipped just to give it that. Again, I was kind of going whimsical um, just to give it that kind of peppermint candy stripe kind of look with some contrasting color. And then added a couple little, a little flower here and with some little um, colonial knots. I really love doing colonial knots. These in the center are French knots and they're like lots of wraps on them just to make them kind of loose. And the other thing, I don't know if you can see that that close up, but if you look at that blue color, because I don't have, um, or I didn't then have variegated threads, I would take two different colors of thread and just take one strand of each or, you know, two and two, just to mix two different colors to give me that kind of um, multicolored look. And I did that, I did that on a lot of these. I did that also on these flowers. This one's kind of just the orange, but this one is like the pink and an orange. And then for my Suffolk puffs, I wanted to, Kind of have them look like flowers and all be a little different from each other uh, so i attached one with just kind of some pistol stitch um, doing the stem in one color and then the little knot in another color and then this is the turkey work and i kind of just took a bunch of colors that i had used you know from the different I, I probably end up using maybe a dozen different colors in this just usually two shades of pink two shades of blue two shades of green that kind of thing so I kind of used them all for the center and did the turkey work, the loops, and then cut them, cut the loops uh, so that they would be a kind of all different um, lengths and then just kind of made that fluffy. And then this one I attached with just some blue straight stitches, um, not around the edge, is kind of loose. And then the center of it, I did some kind of loose, really loose loops like turkey work and then using more strands in the pink. I did some, I think these were like big French knots with lots of wraps. And then uh, the blue is maybe some smaller colonial knots. I'm not even sure, it's been a while since I did those. Just a, a different, some different stitches in there just to make the uh, center interesting and kind of pull all the colors from the flower. And then this one, I wanted some contrast and I needed to pull some of that dark color from the butterfly uh, in. 
And so I just did kind of um, a lazy daisy stitch around the edge of that one. And then the center is some colonial knots. And then the center inside of the puff is uh, turkey work and kind of the limey green. And then that one, it's done the same as this with all the loops, but I just cut them and kind of cut them really short. So it would just be like a little uh, tuft there. And then this one, I did kind of the pistol stitch again. It's in a color, um, you can't really see it. It's kind of the edge, uh, kind of a mauve color that's the outline of this little blue leaf here. Uh, so it doesn't show up too much, but I kind of like the detail of it. It's kind of like another pistol stitch with the little knot on the outside. So it kind of uh, mimicked this edge again. Just the way I design, I'm just kind of, uh, I like to repeat something somewhere else in a subtle way so that it makes everything cohesive, even if it's the tiniest little detail that you might not notice. It just kind of pulls everything together in my mind. So I kind of like to repeat, you know, this is a repeat of this feel of this feel. And, you know, a lot of times you'll see me do things in threes and kind of spread, you know, spread it around so that it's it's balanced. So I these I did first, knowing I wanted to do the Suffolk Puff thing. This center of this one is kind of that wheat color and um, it's six strands. I used all six strands and made them really loopy so that I could just kind of really separate them a little bit, make them nice and fluffy. So I did each one, you know, a little bit different. And then you knew my butterflies are gonna go here and knew I wanted to incorporate wheat somewhere um, because I, I wanted to kind of have some of the Ukrainian colors in this. I also had gone online and looked originally to find some of their designs, thinking maybe I could use some of their traditional uh, patterns and colors. I ended up not having those threads, so I kind of tried to do them bold and darker, but they're not really the, the colors that maybe they would have used. So I wanted to use a symbol then, and so I chose wheat, and I decided to just do just one stripe down the, the page edge uh, for that. And then it still needed more, so I took my page, and I one of the girls, um, maybe it was Rachel, I'm not sure now, I think this was her idea, and I thought it was brilliant, is I am not good at drawing on things or I'm afraid to. One thing she uses is this friction friction pen, and it's from Pilot, and it's erasable. So I, did, I knew I would use this, so that way if I did mess up, I could get rid of it. Um, but I, w I was still afraid to even draw on with that. So she had taken a copy, a color copy of her page at the, at the place that it was at, and then you draw on the paper and you can kind of see where you want. So that's what I did too. And that was very helpful, a very helpful tip. So I drew kind of a little vine and some flowers, just kind of basically where I thought they might look good. Um, and then I did, I did kind of start just doing freehand, um, referring back to my paper uh, where I wanted it on my page. So I just did a little, again, a little um, stem stitch for the stem and then two um, lazy daisies doubled up for the leaves, um, lazy daisy for the flower petals and um, colonial knots for the center. And then um, same thing for the vine here. And again, I used two colors. So I used a darker green and then whipped the stem stitch with a lighter green. I don't know if you can even see that there's two colors, but um, I just kind of like that. I think it just adds a little bit of dimension. And then same with the little flowers, just with Lazy Daisy, and then the turkey work again for the inside. Um, I did, this is where that button already was from the shirt, um, and it kind of just, you know, stuck out like it needed to be a flower. So I just did um, Lazy Daisies again. These actually, the button was there, and then I did kind of a turkey work, just a loop around the edge, but when I did it, it kind of all kind of went around the button too much. And so I wanted it to kind of be open and I couldn't get it to stay open. So I ended up tacking it with a little bit of that wheat color, um, tacking it down, you know, to the other, the blue and green petals that I had done. And then just some more flowers there. Um, these have little pink um, 
two, two colors and it's a French knot with lots of loops so that they'd be kind of just loose. And then these are colonial knots. I really love colonial knots because they're just consistent looking um, and you get in kind of a rhythm of doing them and I really, I love making those. So I did a lot of colonial knots there. And then I needed something here um, and I had stamped a little tiny butterfly onto a piece of silk, but it wasn't big enough to fit into a hoop. So I decided I'm just gonna cut it out and put it right on. Because if you kind of look at this, you know, it, 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 it adds kind of depth in a way. So like the flying ones, the, they're closer, and the one that's further away, he could just be flat because maybe you're not seeing his wings go. So I just um, stitched him on with a few different colors, just right to the shirt. And what else? Then I still feel like I needed more. I, I could have stopped there, but um, when they do the weeks, it's usually, you know, background fabrics, composition, um, stitching, and then embellishing. And so for the embellishing, I thought I'll add some more buttons because I can't just have one button on the whole page. That doesn't make sense. So I needed to add some buttons. So I ended up, I didn't like that this just looked like a button so non-regular. So I ended up taking out the white thread and then just stitching it with that lime green and stitched it from the holes around the outside of the button. And I, I liked how that looked because it's there, but it's more subtle and it looks more like a flower. And so I did the same thing here. I needed a flower up at the end of that vine. So I just got a tiny shirt button again and then did it with blue. And then I added um, some French knots to, in the holes to kind of give me the flower center. And then I did colonial knots all around the outside edge just to make it look more like a flower. And then I decided, well, I can't just have one of those and I needed more buttons. So I went ahead and added, I had added some um, just kind of grass marks on the bottom there and then um, did some more buttons. And I kind of tried to do them all a little bit different. Um, pulling colors opposite. So this, the little colonial knots are the tan and the blue from this shirting material. Um, some more of the lime green because I hadn't used too much of that. So I pulled a little bit of that over there. And then the wheat color again um, there. And then I just plopped one right there in the middle with two colors of pink um, kind of stacking the colonial knots instead of just one row. I kind of, I did a lighter pink row and then I did the darker pink with less threads. So I think I used three or four for the light pink and then two for the darker pink and then kind of just stuck those in between and on top and whatnot just to kind of make it um, a little bigger of a flower. And then it has the lime green and then um, some very loose wheat French knots in the holes. So I think that's everything for that one. And it's going to get attached there, probably with a hidden stitch again, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, and the wheat, let's see, I don't think I said what kind of stitch. I looked up a wheat stitch in it, so it kind of, I don't know if I did it right, but it's just kind of like that. Kind of fly stitch maybe? Nah. I don't think so. I think it's more because it's more like those straight stitches. Okay, well, another beginner page, but um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like how colorful it is and bright, especially after the crazy month. So um, I will be moving on to the next one. So hopefully, it'd be kind of fun if there was a bird in this one. I don't know. We'll see what the we'll see what they pull out of the bag. So this is my um, where I'm at on my slow stitch journal. If you have any questions about that, you know put them down in the comments for me. And for those of you who follow my channel and I haven't been working on anything else all month or think I haven't been working on anything else, I had been working on my my first um, the first signature of my vintage grunge journal. I had been working on it and I was about to do a video and now I don't even know where I left off. So I, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a peek. I did do something here with a pocket and I will be, I, I wanted to get things ready and then I'll be attaching them, but I don't even, I ended up doing this instead of a pocket that it was gonna be a pocket, I ended up doing it as a multi little thing. I don't wanna show you too much. Um, and I was working on just some more, some more things, nothing's attached yet. 
I'll have a tutorial on this little thing. Some fun things. I think I was on this section when I ran out. So I'll, I'll work on that a little bit. Um, these I need to kind of figure out. But I'm, I'm getting somewhere. So I will be, I'll be picking this back up. I'm working on the kit as I go along. Uh, so I will be working on that and hopefully have a video soon uh, for what I was working on. If you haven't seen this at all, if you're just catching me for the first time, it's a second volume of this journal that I did last year. Um, I ended up splitting it into two volumes. So uh, this is the finished volume one and I'm working on volume two. So that's where I'm going to next. I also got, if you saw my post, not a video, but I did a post about a surprise bundle that I had ordered and it came while I was gone. So I also have all of that to organize and share. I did a video uh, of me opening the box, but I was so exhausted. I had just gotten home from a six hour drive and I was so tired that my video is not very uplifting or upbeat. So um, I think I'll wait and share all that when I have it better organized. So have the great rest of your day. I'm gonna go make something. Bye.